This is the second video on second order responses. This video looks at systems which are severely overdamped. A reminder then of what we said in the first video. We're looking at second order systems of this type, a d2x dt squared plus bdx dt plus cx equals f, and we're thinking about how the behavior depends on the coefficients a, b, and c. We're looking at scenarios where f of t is a constant. Um, zero is one form of a constant. And this particular video is going to look at scenarios where the poles are real and widely spaced. That's the most important thing, that they're widely spaced. Not only are they real, but they're also widely spaced. Now, the previous video showed that where you've got real poles, so b squared greater than or equal to 4ac and poles at positions p1 and p2, then you can write the solution in this form. So x of t equals 1 over c into 1 plus 1 over p2 minus p1 all times p1 e to the p2t minus p2 e to the p1t. So that was in the previous video and you should go and look at that if uh, you need to. Now what this video looks at is what happens if p1 and p2 are widely spaced. So you've got two real poles but they're not very close together. Here's an example. So I've got x double dot plus 10x dot plus 9x equals 1. If I look at the characteristic equation, there it is, p squared plus 10p plus 9 equals 0, and I solve, I find I've got one pole at minus 1 and one at minus 9. So those are pretty widely spaced. If I take my generic solution, which is what I've done here, and plug in the numbers, now I'm not going to go through each step one at a time. If you need to, you can pause the video and look at the steps by yourself, what you will find is that this is the solution at the bottom. So x of t is 1 over 9 plus 1 over 72 into e to the minus 9t minus 9e to the minus t. So what's the key point here? The slow pole is dominating the response. Look, I've got a coefficient of 9 on the e to the minus t, whereas only a coefficient of 1 on the e to the minus 9t. So the slow pole is 9 times bigger than the fast pole, as well as the fact that it decays much slower. Here's another example. I've got x double dot plus 20x dot plus x equals 1. If I solve for the poles of this system, I get these two here. p equals minus 19.95 or minus 0 0.05. So you'll notice these poles really are very widely spaced indeed. Substituting into my known solution, and I've missed the steps because you can do that in your own time, this is what you get. You get x of t equals 1 plus 0 0.0025 e to the minus 19.95t minus 1.0025 e to the minus 0.05t. So again, what do you notice? The fast pole, the e to the minus 19.95t, has got a very small residue indeed. So not only does it converge very fast, but the residue is negligible. Because that residue is in essence 40 times smaller than this residue here. Now just a warning to remember, these insights are true only if you have zero initial conditions. It's always possible to skew the initial conditions so that the uh, larger, sorry, the faster exponential has a big coefficient if you really want to. But that's not the point of this video. Now just to demonstrate a point, so using the same example as on the previous slide, what we've done here is we've overlaid, so that's the key point if I write that, we've overlaid x of t, there it is, with what you get if you just use the slow pole and don't include any of the fast pole at all. And what you'll notice is in terms of visual inspection, they are the same. Of course, they're not exactly the same, but they're so close to being the same that what it says is you might as well ignore the fast component altogether because it's not giving any useful change to the response. So if I take that a bit further, what happens if somebody gave you an example like this for zero initial conditions? So x double dot plus 40x dot 
plus 76x equals 1. I can calculate the roots of the characteristic equation. There they are, minus 2 and minus 38. Now what I'm going to say is the minus 38 is much, much faster than the minus 2. And therefore, the response is going to be approximately, this is the key word, 1 over 76. So that's the steady state gain into 1. And then it will be minus e to the minus t, so e to the minus 2t. So what do you notice? I've only used the pole at minus 2. I've ignored the pole at minus 38. And I've approximated the constant for the e to the minus 2t as 1 over 76, because although in truth it will be very slightly different, the difference is too small to matter. And the residue that went with the e to the minus 38t would be too small to matter. And by making it a first order, I can now go and use all the sketching ideas and other things I have on first order systems. Here's a second example, just for you to look at. So in this particular case, you'll see x double dot plus 15x dot plus 14x equals 3, roots at minus 14 and minus 1. So I can say that approximately my response is going to be 3 over 14, so that's the steady state, as you can see hopefully by inspection, into 1 minus e to the minus t. So again, I've ignored the pole at minus 14. I've ignored the fact that the constant on e to the minus t isn't exactly 3 over 14. It'll be slightly different. And I've said that this will be good enough to gain an insight into how the system is behaving. So conclusions. We demonstrated that if you've got a very overdamped second order system, by which we mean the poles are widely spaced, real and widely spaced, then the step response behaviours are close to an equivalent first order differential equation based on the slowest mode. And we've given a few numerical examples to illustrate this.